So for this particular project, this is what you're going to be creating, a simple poster. And in it, we're going to use the pen tool to redraw the little sailboat. We're going to use some other drawing tools to paint out the background of this. We're going to add a little bit of text and we're going to do some custom brush lettering and work with those as well. Remember, for this one, you'll need to log in and create an account with the Against the Clock book. If you have your book, if you haven't made one already, I'll help you set it up. But I'm not giving you uh, the first project files. You'll need to go under Students and um, find your account files and done that. Have you all set up your own account already? You haven't? Okay. If you haven't done it, real, real easy. I got the link on our Moodle page. Let's see, we'll scroll to the top. There we are. You can find the link right here. It'll take you to here. I've already set up and signed in, but you can create an account. Once you do that, you can find your student resource files and then download the files that are necessary. I'll help you all do that uh, once we get started from this. For this particular project, the first thing we're going to do is recreate or redraw this uh, illustration as a vector illustration. As you saw from Von Glischka, he works out everything on paper first, then jumps on the computer and vectorizes it. This is kind of a pet peeve of mine. I see a lot of students do. They'll jump on the computer and they'll say, oh, I'm going to make a logo, I'm going to design something, but they have no idea where to start. You work faster with your hands if you're drawing something out on paper. I highly recommend that you always do at least thumbnail sketches or at least try to draw off what you want first, then bring it to the computer and clean it up. The computer is just a tool. It's not going to make you any more or less creative. Um, your own brain will make you more creative. Cool? Okay, so for the tools that we're going to use, I'm going to do a quick overview of the pen tool. I've got videos online that go a little bit more in depth, but there's a couple of things, a couple of new things uh, to think about when using these pen tools and the drawing tools. We've worked with the pencil tool, and this one's really, really simple to use. So with this one, you click and drag and it draws the line for you. The pen tool gives you a little bit more control over exactly where you place your vector points. I do need to have a stroke, an outline, not a stroke, sorry. Ah, never mind. I do need to have an outline so I can see what I'm working with. And remember, at the top, I can see the, uh, not just the color, but also the width of it. Later on, we'll change up the profile that we're working with, and we'll also work with some of the brushes as well. If you didn't know, there is a stroke palette that gives you a lot more options about how your lines will look, how the corners will interact. Uh, you can even make dash lines and add arrows and those things, but we won't get into that necessarily today. When working with the pen, here's some keyboard shortcuts that are good to remember. I can always click my individual points and it will start to draw it off exactly what I need. The main thing when working with the pen is make sure you go back to the starting point and your icon should have a little, you see the little circle at the bottom right hand side? If you see the circle, that means it will close off the shape that you have. You're completely done. Do y'all remember the keyboard shortcut to deselect something? Did I give you all that one? Was it Command-Shift-A? Shift-Command-A, very good. Shift-Command-A will deselect whatever you have. And then I could go back with my direct selection tool and I can move around things that I need. But how do I get a curved line? What do I need in order to do that? Do you all remember what the things I need for curve lines allow me to create? Sorry, with a B. Bezier. Be Bezier handles. I need my Bezier handles. To pull these out, there are two ways I can do it. I can either click and drag, and there's my Bezier handles, and you, this will give me a curvature to create something. Or, if I accidentally make a mistake, let's say I've finished this out with nothing but straight lines, I need to bring up another tool that will allow me to add on Bezier points to some straight points. The tool we're going to use is found underneath your pencil or your pen tool, and it's the anchor point tool. Notice that it looks like a little, just a wedge. I'm not gonna select this tool. I'm gonna keep my pen tool. Let me show you how I'm gonna quickly swap over from my pen tool to my anchor point. The option key, watch my cursor change whenever I click it, will automatically change my cursor to that tool. And as long as I'm holding it down, I can use it. With my anchor point tool, I can click on any straight point and drag, and it will pull out the anchor, the, uh, the Bezier points that I need working from there. Pretty cool. 
Another thing the anchor point tool will allow you to do is to control individual Bezier points. If I was to click on this one, it controls only this Bezier curve and it doesn't affect this other one. So I can actually click on this one and drag over and create the curvature for this one as well. Now if I clicked again on this one, it's going to get rid of my Bezier curve. So using this tool is also a way of turning a straight corner into a curved corner or a curved corner back into a straight corner. I can always grab my direct selection tool, white arrow, and also move this around as well. Pretty cool? So that's what that'll allow you to do. Notice that when I created this Bezier curve, if I try to move these handles now, what's happening to the other one? The other one's moving too. Other one's moving too. That's because when I created it, I, created, I set it up to, it by default, automatically sets up to um, make them equal. So if I pull one in and out, it'll be okay, but as far as the angle, it tries to keep the same angle. Only when I use my anchor point tool can I break the angle of one or the other one. Pretty cool? So that'll allow you to do that as well. Some other things you can know about the pen tool. Let's see, I'll turn off, let's make a new layer and I'll just get a blank one from here. If I am clicking and dragging, click and drag, if I click on this point again, well, if I was to click off, you can see it will complete the curve. I'll click and drag. If I click on it one more time, it will erase away that Bezier point. Since I don't have a curve on this side and I click again, it's not going to give me a curved line. It's going to straighten out from here. So one easy way to go from straight lines to curved lines is to click on it again, erase it, and then keep moving. Click and keep moving from here. If I don't want a curved line, and I click again, that'll give me that as well. Pretty cool. The newest version of Illustrator has a great little um, helper with it. We've been using the smart guides, the little green guides that help you line up things and give you an idea of where things can go. But if we go under our Illustrator preferences, and you'll give me a second to be able to find this, one of the new preferences allows me to see exactly where I can make my, um, my changes. Here we are. Under Settings and Anchor, at the very bottom, I want to enable rubber band. I'm going to do it for my pen tool. With that checked off, now check out what I get when I use my pen tool. It's going to give me a line that follows my cursor. And when I click and drag, I've got it. This will show me exactly where my curve will li line up once I click there. So if I take, kind of takes the guesswork out of where the Bezier will line up. When I click, there it is from here. Since I only clicked once, I don't have a Bezier curve, my next line's definitely going to be straight. Click and drag. Rubber band will tell me exactly where it will go when I click once. If I want to stop from here, I need to deselect my line. And so this is where Shift-Command-A will deselect it, and now I can start drawing another line or another object from there as well. Pretty cool? Okay. So that's as far as using the pen tool goes. What you'll do for this uh, first part, you'll draw off the entire object, and we're also going to use that new sh uh, shape builder tool to be able to fill it in and to do some rounding over and to do some, um, some customizing of the colors for this. The next thing that they'll go into is actually creating gradients, and maybe y'all get to that today, maybe not. Uh, next class period, I'll talk about making gradients and some fun things you can do with this. Before I let you go, I've turned on a bonus assignment. You don't have to do this one, but it's a lot of fun if you want to challenge yourself on working with, um, with your pen tool. At the very bottom of Project 2, I've given you an image of a skull. Let me see if I can open this one up. It should have downloaded. I don't see it. Let's download it again. There it goes. Aha! Here we are. I'll open this up in Illustrator. I'm just going to do it quickly. The image that I've given you is just a complete vector image. What I want you guys to do is to redraw the image. And I want you to fill it in with different colors as best as you can. We saw how to make a transparent tracing la layer. So the way I did it was really, really quick. But let's choose some, uh, let me get my swatches. There we go. I don't see my default swatches. I'll open up my defaults right here and I'll work with red. 
Some of these are a little bit easier than others. Obviously, if I zoom in, I see some circles, so I can easily, quickly fill in with an ellipse right there to get the circles. That's too easy. What about a more complex kind of shape, like the eye? Here's how I think about drawing vector shapes. The first thing a lot of students want to do is they don't want to deal with the Bezier uh, curve, so they just do a bunch of points, something like this. And that's okay, it gives me a rough outline, but it doesn't give me the nice smooth edge that I like to, to be able to work with. Instead, think about your shapes as the face of a clock. The face of a clock has a 12, 3, 6, and 9. So when I start off a shape, I'm going to think about it at the top. There's my 12 o'clock. And as I move around, every time there's a curve, I can see, okay, there's a clock face here. Here's a curvature, so there's a mini clock here. There's a little clock here. I'm not looking at it as one big clock. I'm trying to see every time there's a major curve in my shape. And wherever it hits the edge of, say, a 3 o'clock right here. So I'm going around, there's a 3 o'clock. I'll click and drag, and I'll make a curvature that way. As I move around, here it would hit right here at a 9 o'clock. And I'll click here, and I'll drag again. Now this won't give me a perfect line. Later on we'll go back and we'll clean that up. But as I move around, I can place my points exactly where they need to go. So here's a 6 o'clock click and drag, go up here, hey here's 9 o'clock, and here it is back up here at 12 o'clock. And so in just a few points I've gotten pretty close to what I need. Now I need to go back and clean it up. This is where my direct selection tool comes in. I can choose my Bezier handles and be able to work it as close as possible. Same way for this one. Let's click on this one, pull in, and revectorize what I have. You can see how I've gotten very, very close to my original, and I've only done it in one, two, three, four, five, six points versus having to do 10 billion different points. Pretty cool? So y'all y'all tell me about this one. Uh, let's, do, let's do something a little more complex. Ah, let's do this curvature right here. I'm gonna start at 12. I'm gonna go around. You tell me where to stop and make another point. Wait, what? Right there. Right there. Very good. Okay. Holler out. So I'm going to click and drag, and I'm just going to try to get that line as close as possible. Okay? Moving around. Right there. Very good. We'll stop right there. Hey, here's another little uh, tip you can work with. I'm going to hold down my option key. I've got my anchor selection tool. With that tool still selected, I can click on this handle and go ahead and clean it up. And when I let go, I'm back to my pen tool and I can keep working. So let's keep moving around. So let's keep moving around. Y'all tell me to stop. Right there, good. <laughs> Click and drag, that looks good. Y'all tell me where to stop. Very good. Hey, you notice that curve kind of fits it really good. Click and drag. Hey, for this one, if I tried to click over here, it's not going to work. This is where I would want to click here again, give me a nice straight point. So y'all tell me where to stop. Click and drag. Huh? Right there, good. And let's finish it out up here. Not bad. Pretty cool. You'll do the same thing for each one of these. The method works really, really well. It makes things very simple. After a while, you'll, it'll kind of become second nature about how the Bezier curves will flow and where you should put things. But be thinking about the edges of them. Top, 
left, right, and the bottom edge of each curve that you're making should be a little bit different. The only thing you'll be practicing is, you know, when should you use your anchor point tool to correct certain edges? When should you go back and use your direct selection tool to make the corrections? Cool. Any questions on this? This will be a bonus project. It'll be due at the end with everything else. When did I set this up as? Usually uh, 20 extra points or something like that. Yeah, five extra points on any test that you have as well. Don't forget, if you've turned in project one, you should take project one test. You need to be able to get at least an 80 on this before you can turn in project two. Does that make sense? You can take the test as many times as you want. You've got till September 24th to be able to finish up that test, but make sure you do it before that. Also, don't forget about homework quiz for the second project. That's due next week as well. Okay, I'll turn your computer back over to y'all. Let y'all get started.